Hello everyone! Uh, Neo fighting Morpheus, it really doesn't get any better than that. And such is the case in the chess world. A uh, world reigning champion in classical time control, Magnus Carlsen, uh, facing the world reigning champion in Blitz, uh, it really doesn't get better than that. And uh, not only that, uh, Sergei Karakin was actually uh, the challenger for the classical time control uh, championship uh, last year. So these two, they're, whatever the, either of them does, they are rivals for life. So here they face each other in the World Blitz Championship and uh, again it's quite a game. And if you've seen the World, uh, the world uh, Chess Championship last year, uh, it, was, it was quite a match. Uh, the, the match couldn't be decided in classical time format so they had to, you know, resort to other time formats. And in the end uh, Carlsen won with a brilliant Queen Sacrifice on H6. And one would think, um, okay, you lost that game, I mean, you, you had to go for a win in that game, but uh, probably in every other game you will be very careful what Carlsen does on the h6 square, but this game shows that's not really the case. Uh, but you, you'll see what I mean by that. So let's see the game. Uh, Carlsen plays e4 with the white pieces and we have e5, uh, starting off with probably the Ruy Lopez. Uh, knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to b5. We have the Ruy Lopez. Although Carlsen and Karakin did have some uh, amazing games in the Italian, uh, <laughs> but uh, this game Carlsen goes for the Ruy Lopez. And we have knight to f6, the Berlin defense. Uh, d3, bishop to c5, bishop captures, and d captures on c6. Uh, Karakin goes for the alpha 0 variation of the Ruy Lopez. Very interesting. Uh, knight to c3 by Carlsen. We have castles. Bishop to e3 and bishop back to d6. Bishop to g5. It seems like Carlsen lost the tempo by playing bishop e3 and then bishop g5, but uh, Karakin also moved the bishop uh, twice, so it doesn't really matter. This comes with a very nice uh, uh, pin on the knight on f6, and it's always, uh, you know, principled to uh, get your pieces as deep in, the, in, the, in your opponent's position as possible. So it's, uh, it's a nice move. Uh, rook to e8 by Karakin and h3, not allowing any bishop to g4. Uh, c5 now. We have knight to d5, uh, kind of threatening to capture. Knight captures on f6, maybe b bishop to h6 would be a very unpleasant position for Karakin. And bishop to e7, preventing this, but also allowing Carlsen uh, to grab uh, the bishop on e7 and uh, take the bishop pair away from Karakin. And that's exactly what Carlsen does. Knight captures on e7, this is with check. <clears throat> Queen captures on e7 and Carlsen castles. We have h6, kicking the bishop, bishop to e3. Now again, the h3 pawn comes very handy. No knight to g4 ideas are possible to harass the bishop and knight to d7. We have knight to d2 by Carlsen. Carlsen wants to push f4 as Karakin has so conveniently got rid of his dark square bishop. And uh, Karakin does have some counterplay here. Uh, he could go for b6, maybe bishop to b7 next, uh, but he goes for knight to b8. He wants to bring this knight to c6, as he does have a pawn on c5, so maybe this knight could find some nice square uh, on, on d4, not very likely because c3 is always possible, uh, but uh, if Carlsen will push f4, then from c6 this knight maybe could come to e5. So we have f4 by Carlsen, e captures on f4, rook captures on f4, and now knight comes to c6 with maybe ideas of uh, knight d4 or e5 in the future. And Carlsen immediately jumps in to the attack, queen to h5, and I mean, why not? Uh, b6 now, we have rook a to f1, Carlsen doubles up on the f-file, and rook to f8. There's a lot of pressure piling up on this f6 pawn. Uh, knight to f3 by Carlsen, uh, Carlsen, all of Carlsen's pieces are pretty much ideally placed. Okay, this rook might be a bit awkward on f4, but it doesn't really matter, black doesn't have a, lot, a dark square bishop, and uh, this rook can always go pretty much wherever it wants. The only piece that isn't ideally placed is the knight on d2, and Carlsen uh, wants, to, wants to fix this. So knight to f3, uh, bishop to e6 by Karakin, and now rook to h4. And this is what I mean. Uh, Karakin pretty much lost the World Chess Championship last year to Carlsen uh, by Carlsen <laughs> doing something on the h6 square. And one would think Karakin would really, you know, be careful of such things. Uh, Karakin plays f6. The idea was probably to capture, bishop captures h6, g captures, and after queen captures, there would be some terrible threats of queen h7 checkmate or queen h8 checkmate. So Karakin plays f6, this stops this idea, and the queen is now ready to jump into the defense. 
uh, and we have queen to g6. Now Carlsen is definitely threatening to play bishop captures or rook captures, whichever will be better, uh, depending on Karakin's move. Uh, and queen to f7. Karakin offers the exchange of queens, still eyeing that a2 pawn, although if you look at this position, uh, all of Carlsen's pieces are, <laughs> are really going for Karakin's king. Uh, the a2 pawn doesn't really seem all that important. Queen to g3, Carlsen of course declines this, if you control more space, don't trade pieces. Uh, and here, now th there is a definite threat of something capturing the h6 pawn, and, and you should really not allow this, especially if you lost your world championship title by Carlsen doing something on h6. And here, h5, the queen is protecting h5, not allowing this rook to move, this pretty much... Uh, traps the rook on h4, this this would have been okay, Car uh, Karakin could have continued this game. But instead, uh, after this queen to g3 by Carlsen, Karakin plays uh, knight to b4. The idea here being knight wants to capture on c2, threaten e3. It's a, it's a weird move to play, basically it's, it's the move that immediately loses the game. But okay, uh, Carlsen is very happy about this, he plays bishop captures on h6. So, there we have it, Karakin, you, <laughs> you didn't... Uh, watch out for Carlsen doing something on h6, uh, so bishop captures on h6. Uh, we have knight captures on c2, and this is Karakin's idea. Here, Carlsen plays knight to e5. Uh, the pawn can't capture the knight because you lose the queen, obviously, rook captures queen. Uh, the problem with this move is the queen has to keep an eye on the g7 square, otherwise queen captures on g7 will be checkmate. Uh, the only square uh, from which the queen can keep an eye on g7 is actually queen to e7. But if you play queen to e7, uh, it's it's uh, very hard very hard for Karakin to continue this. Uh, then knight to g6 comes, uh, queen is attacked, rook is attacked. This is very very uncomfortable. So after this knight to e5 move, uh, Karakin could have gone for something like knight to d4 maybe. I mean, it, it is blitz, uh, both are in time trouble. So now if you capture the queen, knight to e2, check forks the king and queen, this actually wins for Karakin. Uh, now after king to f2, knight captures, king captures and rook captures, it's it's a better position for black, might, might be even winning. Uh, but, uh, I mean, the ugly truth is, after knight to d4 threatening this knight to e2 check, you can simply go king to h1. And now there really isn't a thing you can do. Uh, now the queen would have to move, for example, queen to e7, but now comes knight g6, and after queen to d6, uh, attacking queen on g3, simply bishop to f4, and black is falling apart. So after this knight to e5 move, Karakin thought, eh, I mean, uh, f captures on e5. He captured knight, at least he will grab two pieces uh, <laughs> for the queen. Carlsen played rook captures on f7, we have rook captures on f7, Sorry, queen captures on f7, rook captures on f7, and queen to g6 now by Carlsen. Uh, immediately going for that bishop on e6, uh, making sure the queen is on, uh, on an ideal square. Uh, you have to move the bishop somewhere. Knight to d4 is definitely an idea, and it's a beautiful square for the knight also protecting the bishop. Uh, but Karakin plays the bishop captures on a2. You know, he just gave up a queen for two pieces. He thought, I'm not getting checkmated here, I might as well probably grab a pawn, get some more material advantage. Uh, unfortunately, this doesn't work. Bishop to g5. Carlsen is now threatening rook to h7, followed by bishop to f6, and there will be uh, there will be hell on the g7 square. Uh, Karakin plays rook f to f8, and uh, probably with ideas of bishop coming back to f7, kicking the queen away, uh, but Carlsen simply doesn't allow this. He plays uh, rook to h7, and there is nothing you can do in this position for black. You're getting checkmated in four moves, whatever black plays. Karakin played rook to f7. Car Carlsen played bishop to f6. And uh, in this position, uh, world blitz reigning champion uh, Sergei Karakin resigned the game. There is really nothing you can do. The threat, of course, is rook captures with check. Rook captures, queen captures. This is checkmate. And there really isn't anything you can do here. Whatever you play really loses. If, if you, I mean, it's really hard to even uh, make any move for black, everything loses, it's checkmate into whatever black does. For example, rook to d7, simply you capture it, bishop captures, and it's all over. I mean, really, really a silly position for Karakin. So yeah, after bishop to f6, Sergei Karakin resigned the game, and a wonderful win for Magnus Carlsen. Uh, 
I, I do hope you enjoyed it. I mean, this is there is no great greater uh, matchup than Carlson versus Karakin in the chess world. Uh, it's 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 like uh, Neo fighting Morpheus. It's it's just always uh, amazing. So that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Mohamed Al Sabak uh, and uh, Dan Subotic for a contribution to my channel. Uh, thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, both of them will be from the World Blitz Championship. Feel free to suggest any game. Uh, I can't uh, follow all games, uh, but I'm sure there are amazing games played, like uh, the one Anton Korobov played in the last round. I hope you got a chance to check it out. Uh, so make sure you suggest an interesting game. I will check all the comments. Uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon.